I want to take this tank cover and make it look just like a 92. It's actually already painted. And believe it or not, somebody actually did it. It looks like they did a pretty good job too, which is going to make it that much more difficult <laughs> for us to get the paint off. But, um, you know, I'm looking for parts to make this look like a 1992. Uh, Vito's is going to be making a run of 1992 plastics. However, I've been in contact with them and they have no idea when they're going to be done. And I just don't want to end up in one of those situations where it's like the project's ready to go and we're in another ASPCA uh, Raptor situation, only this time just sitting around waiting for parts. So I want to have a backup plan here. And uh, these are already painted tank guards anyways, so it's not like we're ruining a nice set. Um, they actually look pretty decent, they, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Uh, but what I think what, what I'll do is I'm going to take off the graphics, and I thought about it. I'll strip the paint, and then I, I found some, some pretty good paints over here. This paint right here I think matches the 92 Banshee. I'm hoping that it shows up on the screen as good as it can. I mean, I, sometimes it's a little bit different. And then this seat cover here from Moto Seat that I already ordered, you can see it matches perfectly. This color is called Sea Foam, I believe, and then this is called Seaside. Now, uh, spray painting plastics, I don't typically like to do that. It can be kind of jank, but if it's done right, it can actually last pretty good, um, pretty well. And I thought about it, the OG Banshee, I painted the tank cover. That actually has, I think, the original 1990 tank cover on there, and I painted it this metallic blue, and it lasted for like five years. That sat outside, had plenty of knee rub on it, um, uh, through the entirety of it, probably like 60 hours of riding. So, uh, granted, it had graphics on it, and this is going to be mostly bare. Maybe we can put like a clear coat on it. We'll get, I can get clear graphics and put it over or something, but I think we'll be okay. Let's give it a shot, and uh, when the Vito's plastics come in, then we can just swap them over or whatever. But it's always good to have a backup plan. Really appreciate you guys coming in today to help out because we got a lot of work ahead of us, and uh, you know, it can be really annoying working by yourself, so thanks. Now, it's not like this is anything new, but, you know, as uh, <laughs> I'm seeing here, trying to do any kind of, like, replica. Oh, this is awesome, dude. The graphics are coming right off. Heat gun is where it's at. But doing any kind of replica, especially, like, with older things. This is, we're doing a 1992. That's, like, a 30-year-old model. Um, especially, like, this one is a one-off color scheme. It's kind of difficult to get the parts in a hurry. I'm sure if I had more time, you know, I could probably locate a nice like OEM set or, you know, wait for Vito's to uh, do their run of the 92 theme. But I really want to get this done. And it's just really tough to come by. It's a, the 92 is a really cool color scheme. And uh, we, it's just going to be difficult finding the, uh, the tank cover, basically. The headlights also, they have a white housing and uh, the seat cover. But I, at least I think I got the seat cover Covered. And the headlights I'm actually going to do today as well, since we're doing painting. These are actually replicas with LEDs on the inside. They're the same style as an OEM Yamaha Banshee. And to be frank with you, they feel like the same quality as OEM. I have, I've, I've had my hands on the OEM ones. They have the same kind of bushings and stuff, it looks like. These actually might be okay. I trust these because, because these are only 35 bucks. First thing that comes to mind is jank. But the reason that I trust them, I wouldn't say trust them. The reason I'm giving them a shot is because the LED lights that I use on, that I've used, that I use in the OG Banshee and on the Voodoo Banshee, you can get those for like 15 or $20. And they're really solid and reliable. I've never had a problem with them. LED lighting is really cheap. So I think what this is, is basically, it's probably an LED light from that they've that's already that is already existing, and they just housed it in this. It's probably really cheap to make. And the other reason I'm trusting it is because if it sucks, I'm just gonna throw it in the trash, and uh, we'll start over with something different. But I'm really like I'm really looking forward to trying this out. Um, but in the 1992 year, it had a white housing in the back. The front remained uh, black, and I actually have OEM ones too. So if there's some kind of weird difference on these, I have OEM covers. I don't really know that we'd need to change that out, but I have them just in case. But the back is white and it's impossible to find. You can find them, but they want like, people want like $250, $300 just for like a used housing and then they're not even in great shape. So we'll give this a try. The purists will be so mad. Oh, it's, this isn't a complete restoration. Those aren't, oh, those aren't OEM bolts. And, and, and it, oh, oh, you have to get the right tank cover. Oh. People, it's, it's crazy, man. It's amazing how easily things that can disrupt someone's mental space. <laughs> Their mental stability is completely disrupted.
by the choice of ATV parts that I make. <laughs> Unbelievable. There's, uh, there's our original finish underneath. It looks like they did not really scuff the surface, which is probably why it peeled the paint right off. You can see the old, where the, uh, the Yamaha decal was and everything. This is why you can't just paint over paint if it's been painted because you just don't know uh, what kind of prep work was done underneath. If I had painted this and I, and I knew that it was prepped and it was the paint underneath would have good, would adhere well, then I could paint over top of it as long as it's smooth. But it's only, the paint is only gonna stick as good as the bottom layer. So this paint is gonna have to go. And then we'll get rid of this grill piece for a couple reasons. One, because it's painted and getting the paint off of this thing would be a major pain in the ass. Uh, two, because it's got some breaks in it. that we can't really repair that. And uh, three, because it's cheap enough to replace. Might as well just put a new one in there. You can see this was red before. So this was probably in 87 to 90, I think they were, I think all of those were red. Or it could be a 2000 too. I think 2000 was red, I don't know. You know, on second thought, I might keep this and resell it. All right, check it out. You guys can see this is a, it's actually a pretty good paint job. So to strip that off, you know, if you could sand it and that would take forever. Instead, we're gonna use this goop right here. It's, um, Aircraft grade stripper. You can pick it up at Walmart, pretty much any uh, hardware store. It's got to be really careful with this stuff because if you get it on your skin, it will it will burn <laughs> pretty bad. Uh, it takes a couple seconds, and then all of a sudden you'll be like, "Oh my god, what is that?" And you don't want to get it in your eyes either. Uh, usually, I like to use a disposable brush. Unfortunately, I'm out of my my, uh, my more narrow brushes. All I've got is this three inch. Not ideal for getting it in this can, but it's going to work. Uh, so you just kind of take it and paint it onto your surfaces and let the uh, the chemicals do the work and it will generally, the, the paint just kind of crinkles up and you can wipe it away or you can blast it away with a hose, which is what I normally do. Just gonna put this on. I usually do a pretty thick coat. The thicker you go, the more likely it is to get the job done because sometimes it doesn't get all the paint off, especially if it has good prep work. Those are the worst ones, but usually in a case like this, it's just gonna come right off, but uh, we don't know. Maybe it does have good prep work. You can actually see it's working already. See the paint just lifting away? So I'll go ahead, coat this whole thing, and then let it sit for like 10, 15 minutes, and then it's usually about ready. We might have to do a second coat or a third coat even. Using gloves with this stuff is a good idea too. All right, guys, check it out. It's been about uh, 10 minutes or so, and uh, I want to show you what happens. It's kind of peeling up all over. I discovered also that it's not red. There's uh, This has been painted a couple times, I guess. You can see, man, it just knocks the paint right off. Yeah, man, there's just layers upon layers. I can see now we're getting to the red <laughs> underneath, and then I think there's blue under that. It looks like there's... Uh, primer, blue, blue, primer, then red, and then maybe primer again, I don't know. And then the original blue is under that. So this has been painted multiple, multiple times. And I think what I'm gonna do is head down to the hardware store and get some more stripper because uh, this stuff kind of like loses its potency over time. And uh, this is a pretty old can that I'm using and I really don't feel like doing this for like hours on end. But regardless, I'm gonna get all of this stuff off and I'll see you guys in a little bit. Don't worry, I'll, I'll do this. I'll do this. You guys go chill. All right, so after a couple hours of work, this is what we're left with. These are the OG plastics, I guess. I don't know if they came on this machine or not, but they look like some OEM blue. You can even see where the factory warning sticker was, and where it used to say Yamaha. Actually in pretty good shape. If you wanted, you could probably restore these and make them look really nice. Somebody ruined a great set of plastics. And uh, a little bit of remnant stuff behind, but 
Uh, it's nice and smooth. I think we'll be able to paint over this and it'll be really nice. Thank God I went out and got that other uh, stripper because that stuff worked so much better than the old stuff. And we'll straighten out these little tabs here. This happens pretty regularly, these tabs bend. They don't look cracked just yet. If you just bend them down, they'll snap. But if we take a heat gun and heat them up, should be able to bend them back down and save them. A lot of times they break off and uh, these tank guards are still usable, but it's nice if you can save these little hook portions. So when you do it like that, they don't snap. Now I actually just got the email from Vito saying that the plastics are supposed to ship next week. So go figure after I do all this work, that's just how it would work. I don't know if that's good timing or bad timing, but I figure we made it this far. We might as well clean these up and we'll paint them. And then we can compare them when the Vito's ones get here. We'll see how close to OEM we got with these. And besides, uh, it's a good tutorial on painting plastics anyways. So these are nice and smooth. If you have imperfections or anything on your plastics, you probably want to smooth them out with some sandpaper because they'll probably show up in your, after you paint over them, if you don't you know, make them nice and smooth. Uh, so I'm going to take some Scotch-Brite and just rough up the surface and this will help with adhesion with the spray paint. These red Scotch-Brites are great because they're abrasive enough that you get good adhesion, but they're not so abrasive that they leave lines and stuff through your finish. They're really perfect. It actually looks pretty good just doing that. It kind of took that like white hazy look out of it. Not perfect, but pretty nice. If you put some SC1 on this, it would look perfect. You can go straight back and forth, but I like to go in a circular motion for the last pass. And I think that leaves the best surface for adhesion. And then areas like in here, you see where it's like kind of white. That's a common spot where people miss. And then you get flaking in the corners and stuff. So you wanna take your time and try to get in those corners as best as you can and make everything look uniform. And then the paint will probably stick a lot better. All right, these are actually looking pretty good. Now this next step is really important and that is making sure it's super, super clean. So we've got a bristle brush and this stuff I found to work the best. Uh, you can use awesome, or, um, acetone, lacquer thinner, stuff like that. You can wipe it down. That does work, um, but I just really like using a really good degreaser and scrubbing it really well and then rinsing it really well. And that seems to clean it the best. So I'll spray this all over everything, inside and outside. <clears throat> and let this sit for a minute or so, just so that it really breaks down any dirt that's on there. Then once it's been sitting for a minute, I'll scrub it, make sure you're getting all the <clears throat> grooves, corners and stuff, and do it in like a spiral motion, because there's tiny little um, cracks and grooves in there that you made with the, uh, the Scotch-Brite. You just wanna make sure you get all the dirt out of those little crevices and stuff. That's where you want the paint to fill when we spray this. Just take your time and make sure you clean this really good. All right. And I'm gonna make sure this is rinsed off really, really thoroughly. I'll rinse this for like a solid minute. Wow, would you look at that? It's like brand new. It actually does look pretty nice. And then the last thing you wanna do just make sure that these are super dry. All right, now these are not ideal conditions for painting. Um, if I could do it inside, I would. And it's also kind of breezy today. And uh, you really shouldn't do it under a tree either because stuff can fall and get stuck in your paint. <laughs> and also uh, you don't want it to be hot and humid. It's, we're on the border today. <laughs> but I think we'll be okay. Uh, what I want to do is give the inside just a two thin coats, and then I'm gonna move it inside right away anyways, and I'm gonna let them dry for a couple hours while we do something else, and then we'll flip it over, and on the outside, we'll wait till it's a little bit cooler at night. Just real thin coat. This stuff doesn't need any primer. It is formulated to bond right to plastic. Whether it'll do that, I just don't know. Okay, while the underside is drying, we can go ahead and start messing with our headlights. So these are the cheapy Chinese LED OEM style headlights. Uh, very lightweight. They kind of feel chintzy, but honestly, man, this is an OEM headlight. <laughs> this is really lightweight and feels chintzy. I don't really think it's uh, much of a difference in quality because it's a simple unit. You know what I mean? It's a headlight. Uh, so what I did is I dissected both of them. And now typically 
Uh, the OEM one does have the uh, the rock guard on the front as well. I actually have an OEM rock guard right here because I was originally just going to replace the rock guard on these. And uh, I think what happened is this probably broke at some point in time. And you can see where it used to be. And somebody just cut off the grate entirely, probably because it looked like crap uh, with like broken uh, crossbars and stuff. Anyways, I took it apart. They seem to be basically from the same mold, identical. Uh, this, oh, oh, geez, are you serious? I took this brand new OEM one and compared it to the aftermarket. And essentially they're the same, only the one is glossy, the aftermarket, and then the, uh, the OEM one kind of has like a texture. Now, this is a new one, so this is probably for like an 06. I actually have one in the bag still, right here with the part number on it, if anybody wants to refer to it. I don't know if they ever came glossy from the factory and they changed it or not, but I actually think that this more of a matte, uh, flat look is a little bit of a cleaner design. The other thing I noticed is that this has these little like tabs down here. They're, they're on the, that and they're also on the body. I don't know that they have any function. There's not like a screw that goes through it or anything. The OEM one doesn't have it, so I probably, We'll just cut those off. So we'll go ahead and pull this apart. If you've ever dissected a Yamaha Banshee headlight, you'll see. Oh, geez, man, that just hit my balls. You'll notice that it's virtually identical to the OEM. This opens up like so. And you've got the light inside, which, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna show you this in a second, but this is really our, our weak point of the aftermarket lights. And then you've got the, the uh, square style connector. And I'm not gonna be using the square style. And the lead is a little bit longer than stock too. Just to show you guys the difference. It's about twice as long. So I guess that's nice. It's better to be longer than shorter, right? That's what she said. And then you've got the rubber grommets as well. Uh, from what I un uh, noticed, the rubber grommets are exactly the same. They come with these like filled holes. I don't know if that's like, because they didn't come out of the machine properly or what, but you can pull them out with your finger. And then I, I compared them to the OEM ones. And uh, they're pretty much identical. You just kind of toss these pieces away. Now to get this wire out, you either have to cut it or remove the connectors, pull that apart. For comparison, I'm gonna pull this OEM one apart for you guys to see too, in case you're interested in buying one of these. Same thing with this, you can't pull it apart. Oh, oh you, that, that, that connector does fit through. All right, well, that's good. So I can show you guys that these are virtually identical. Uh, you know, pretty much, I don't see any differences. They both feel the same weight. They feel like the same amount of quality, except for these little tabs down here. And I'm just gonna chop those off so that they look just like OEM. And I think down here, these might just be slightly different, but they're the same width when you put them up against each other. I don't really think that, I wouldn't really consider that much of a difference. And then the lights, other than one being LED and one not being LED, they've got the same kind of spring system on the bottom. I think that's for shock absorption, not necessarily for adjusting. And uh, the lights fasten with a screw on the side. So basically uh, interchangeable with stock, I would say pretty much the same quality. One's gonna be glossy, one's not. And uh, <laughs> what I found out though, is that the actual light itself is the weak point of these Jankmaster 5000 headlights. All right, now first off, just holding this in your hand, it's it feels janky, it really does. You can see there's like glue around the edges of the inside, it's all uneven, probably to seal it. And I doubt that that's actually sealed. And then look in the back, dude, why even seal it if you're gonna leave this huge hole in the back? And I can see it's not sealed if I look down in there. Water could get in the back of this thing and fill it up, you know, condensation, whatever, it's just not a, a good unit, feels really light, and uh, I'm gonna plug it in right now and you'll see just how bright it is. All right guys, check it out. I waited till nighttime for this. We're gonna test out the cheap LED. We're gonna illuminate the ASPCA wrapper. Let's see how bright it is. Oh, I don't know, man, that's, it's kind of corny. It's pitch black in here, so I mean, anything is gonna be, you know, give you light. This is, uh, I wouldn't exactly call this great though, and we've got the high and the low beam powered. Shut that off, turn it back on. I don't know, man, that's, that's pretty weak. I think on the illumination scale, I'm gonna give that a 3.5. Yeah, so these are not gonna cut it. The whole idea of converting the headlights to LED is because this is supposed to be a resto mod. So we're trying to keep it looking OEM, but actually improving it. And these are certainly not an improvement. So my idea was to paint these white 
have the LEDs in there, put the OEM cover on the front, and it would be really nice, decent quality, and really good lighting. Uh, but <laughs> we just can't use this headlight. So I was thinking, and I came up with an idea here. So these are the headlights that I've been using on Banshees basically since the OG Banshee. These are from the OG Banshee. They're not the first ones I ever put on there, um, but they were the second time around I built it. Anyways, these work great. They're waterproof, they're reliable, they're really cheap. They're like 20, 25 bucks, and they're really bright. All right guys, now I've got the LED from the OG Banshee. Let's see how it fares. Ooh, that is considerably brighter. Wow, I, I would say um, for, for a small light on the brightness scale, I'm gonna give this like a nine. I mean, I don't think you can get much more light out of a small four and a half inch LED. That's, that's really good. Never had an issue with them. Never had one burn out or anything. So I'm like, that was, this was, that was the initial reason, reason that I thought that these LEDs could possibly have the same performance as these. So I got to thinking if I could get the power of this light, but the look of these lights. So I was measuring them and stuff. And check this out, these lights damn near fit inside this OEM housing. But you know, down here, we've got this piece on here. So I was like, man, these are the old ones. I'm never gonna use them. You can see they're kind of yellowed. So what I did is I chopped off the bottom, rounded it out, and then there's a little hood on the top of these. I just cut that off and made it so that it could fit in the housing. and it literally fits perfect. I mean like, <laughs> all I gotta do is utilize these two holes right here and put like a brace across the back, something where I can screw that in and then maybe put like a silicone in like four spots just to kind of cushion this from moving around and boom, we've got the power of these headlights and then the look of OEM. So that was my idea. I was gonna get the ones with the halos like I have on the Voodoo Banshee, which I love. And then I went to look it online and actually at the top of the computer, I'll show you what I ended up ordering. All right, so today we're gonna do Amazon, not doing eBay. I really do like to choose Amazon if I possibly can when it comes to electronics, specifically electronics, because you've got the review section on Amazon. So, you know, I can see, kind of get an idea if it's junk or not, you know, there could be fake reviews and stuff in here, but you get these people, you know, they include like pictures and stuff and they tell you their experiences and that, that really kind of sells it for me. At least gives me like a tip if it's gonna be any good. So I stumbled across these. Well, I didn't stumble across them. I was searching pretty hard, <laughs> honestly. But these were the best ones that I came up with. They're four and a half inches width in width. So that should fit in the housing perfectly. They're designed for Harley Davidson's. So I, I'm not saying that makes them good quality, but stuff that's made for the street uh, could be better. I don't know. I like them because they have the white halo. I think that'll look pretty trick. And then they have, it's supposed to be like this wide beam for driving. So uh, the reviews were good, should be bright. Uh, it looks like it has a cast housing and it just looks like way better quality than the other lights. So we're gonna go ahead and try them, $35.99, add to cart, uh, we should be good to go. So those won't get here for a couple days. In the meantime, what I wanna do is sand this down, scuff it up, paint it and we'll be ready to go as soon as they get here in the mail. All right, now I'm not gonna take you guys through the mundane process again of prepping plastic for paint. We're just gonna do the same thing that we did with the tank cover. However, I do wanna get rid of these little tabs because the OEM ones don't have that. These cutoff wheels are freaking great. These little Dremel kits, they're super thin and they cut plastic so easily. Uh, so we'll use our Dremel here at a mildly uh, slow speed and just take your time. If you force it, that's when plastic melts and then it starts to get uh, the melty runs and can sling all over the place too. So if you do this slow and try not to get it too hot, that's the best way to cut plastic I found. Then come in with the die grinder and clean it up. Now I'll scuff the inside and the outside of this, clean it up, I'll put some paint on it. I'm coating these in a semi-gloss white from Rust-Oleum. I flipped over our tank covers and the radiator cover. Uh, it's been about an hour and a half for the underside to dry. And now we're gonna do the top section. I've got them laid out. I'm behind the trailer here. 
because that's blocking the wind and we've got a nice area of shade. And I'm gonna be going over these, doing nice, very thin coats. I'll probably do like between, uh, I'd say four and six thin coats uh, until it looks nice and even. And then I'm gonna go over it with a clear coat and I'll probably do two or three coats of crystal clear and that will protect these and give them a nice long lasting finish. I'm also setting a timer and waiting 15 minutes between each coat. Also when I'm doing this, when I start spraying, I like to get the difficult areas first and then I do the large flat areas last. And I find that that allows for the paint to lay a lot more even. You might be tempted to keep laying on the paint to cover the entire thing, especially on the initial coats. I'm telling you, be patient, thin coats, and it'll turn out best. Now I'm sure you guys may have noticed, as I've been building this Banshee and many other projects, I'm constantly needing replacement parts. A lot of those parts are gonna be OEM parts, some of the stuff isn't available, and a lot of it is gonna be really expensive if you get it brand new. So one of my favorite resources is Power Sports Nation. I like to hop on their website, see what kind of inventory they have before I go you know, straight to getting it from the factory, because a lot of times you can get uh, parts in really good condition for a fraction of the cost. They have a huge inventory, super easy to navigate. Basically, just hop on there, search, find what you're looking for, add the items to your cart, and you're good to go. Now, the part that I'm looking for is an OEM radiator because the one that came on this Banshee, well, it had seen better days. It had a repair on it, and I think it's time for replacement. So you can use their find your part section right here, right on their homepage, make, year, and model, or you can do it the way that I like and just type in what you're looking for. So we'll type in Banshee Radiator, <laughs> Radiator, and uh, you're gonna get a list of all of their inventory. So you can see what's nice is we got these pictures because for something like a radiator, you kinda wanna know what it's gonna look like. So we'll go ahead and choose this one right here. This looks pretty good. Some of the fins are gonna need to be straightened out. I like to have to do a little bit of work to my stuff. So $27.98, we're gonna add to cart. It's as easy as that. We'll go to my cart right here. And there it is, man, $27.98, free shipping. And we will proceed to check out and we'll get this thing. And actually guys, this has already arrived at the house. Check it out. Now this thing is in good shape to begin with. You guys can see uh, not too many bent tabs. The entire thing is nice and straight, not twisted or anything. And this is one of those items, I usually get an aftermarket radiator. In fact, you can see the aftermarket one here in the ASPCA, those oversized ones, because they're really cheap and I've never had an issue with them. Sometimes fitment isn't perfect with them, but they usually have higher capacity, they keep the engine a little bit cooler, and I've never had any issues. But since we're going for the OEM look and the radiator is right in your face, you really can tell those aftermarket ones. So that's why I wanted to get one of these aftermarket, or uh, OEM rather, and uh, I called up PSN and I was like, hey man, you know, it's gotta be in good shape. And he's like, dude, go look on the website because in most cases, the item in the picture is the actual item that you're gonna receive. Sometimes it's not and they will clarify that, um, but at least with like a radiator, that's one of those things that it's kind of, it is an aesthetic piece. So this one, like I said, really nice shape right off the bat. Now uh, I am gonna coat it, but before I do that, I, did, I cleaned it already just with a soft bristle brush and some awesome degreaser because you don't wanna bend these little fins any worse than they already are. Uh, and then I rinsed it out really good, blew it out with air. And now the one thing is these little fins here. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna straighten those out. It won't be perfect, but we can make it look pretty good. Okay, so things are about to get really tedious here. This is one of those things that you really don't have to do this, especially with a radiator like this. This one's, it's, as long as it doesn't leak, it's gonna perform just fine. These are very cosmetic damages, but since you know we're doing like a restoration kind of deal here, definitely I wanna try to fix them. Now, uh, a lot of people will do it with a flathead, and it'll work, you know, you can straighten these out with a flathead screwdriver, no problem. But the problem is sometimes when you use this, you get like wrinkles, uh, they don't completely straighten out. And I mean, it'll, it'll look better than it did before, but it just doesn't look quite right. Uh, at least, I don't think so anyways. Uh, the best way that I've found is using a little tiny, almost like a pair of tweezers. These are a great tool to have. They give you a little bit more control, and then for the ones that are like twisted or wrinkling, the fact that you're not just pushing on one side, this kind of squeezes it. It gives you more power to manipulate it, and you can make them really a lot nicer than you can with a flathead screwdriver. I think it's easier and quicker. Now this is gonna take a while regardless, but any tools that I have that are gonna help make it a little bit easier, that's gonna be my friend and you know help me from getting extremely angry and throwing things at the wall. All right, now we're gonna start on the back side, and uh, I'll do a little area with you like right here and then I'll do the rest by myself. But you can see this area is kind of like 
smeared and uh, some flat spots. We'll just come in here with our mini pliers and really it makes short work of it. And like these flat ones, it's kind of nice because you can like reach in and flip them straight. And you can also pinch them up against the fins underneath because there's like layers of fins. And that way you can get them to match up nicely. All right, so there it is. Right there above my finger is the line that we just did. It's probably a lot more difficult to notice on camera. Once we paint that, your eye's not gonna get drawn to it at all. It really looks good. And uh, again, with those pliers, you can even get fins on the second or third uh, row. I don't think you could really possibly straighten it as well with a flathead screwdriver. All right, I'm gonna put on some tunes and waste about four hours of my life straightening these radiator fins so that you guys don't have to. Man, I'll tell you what, if this came in the mail in a brand new OEM box, I think I'd believe that it's actually brand new. Check this thing out, man. Really, really, it, it came out better than I thought it would. I'll show you through, let's hold this up to some light. All the, uh, the fins are like perfectly straight. Not perfect, but with the black coating on there and everything being uniform, it really, really makes it Difficult to see any imperfections. I spent a lot of time on this, specifically on the front. Now, if you're wondering, and because this is all, I filmed the entire thing, I actually have timestamps. It took about two hours to wash it, straighten all the fins, and then throw, I think I did four coats of flat black heat paint on it. So two hours of time, yes, it was tedious. However, if you wanna get a brand new OEM radiator for a Yamaha Banshee, the best price I can find is on Rocky Mountain ATV in the OEM section. It's 617 bucks, man. <laughs> and that's at a discounted rate. I think they're over $800 um, from, if you get the F, that's the MSRP from Yamaha, which is insane, dude. So, you know, uh, this ended up costing around $40 if you include the price of the radiator was about 30 bucks from Power Sports Nation. And then we'll just say $10 for the paint, which it wasn't even that much money. So we'll say for $40, we got ourselves basically a brand new radiator as opposed to probably $650 once you include tax and everything. Uh, in my opinion, I would say well worth, uh, time well spent. Now speaking of paint, the radiator cover is done as well. These things came out really, really nice. Like I said before, with this color, I'm hoping that it shows up on the camera. It looks legit, man. Uh, <laughs> at first glance, especially because the underside is done, I would possibly think that these are original. They look really, really good. I have the, uh, the new Vito's grill mesh in there, looking really good. And the gloss on them is just really, really nice. Now this is one of those things, you know, typically you guys have probably heard me say before, when I see stuff that's spray painted, I'm like, oh my God, dude. I try to stay away from spray paint as much as possible. But when you do the job right, this is actually gonna be a good lasting finish. It's just that most people don't spend this much time in its entirety on the tank. We're talking about six hours. It took me between stripping, prepping, cleaning, and painting. It took about six hours of time. That's a lot of time to spend spray painting some stuff. Most people are just not gonna spend that much time and that's usually why spray paint finishes are junk. Something else I found interesting is that literally right on the can, it says, note, on plastic, maximum paint adhesion and durability is achieved in five to seven days. So the next time that you're doing a spray paint project and it doesn't turn out well, or you, know, you go in and put it right into use, and it gets a scratch or something, and you're like, oh, dude, spray paint sucks. Are you actually taking the proper steps to paint your stuff? I just don't know. Uh, again, I would say time well spent finding a 1992 teal color uh, tank cover, well, with the exception of now Vito's uh, going to be offering them soon. It's nearly impossible, and people will literally pay $500 to $1,000, possibly even more for these things, just because they're so freaking rare, and to find them in good shape, even more rare.
I wanted to stop to thank you for making it this far into the video. If you love Banshees and you can't wait for the next video, make sure to check out the Voodoo Banshee I built under the playlist Building the Ultimate Trail Banshee, Voodoo Banshee. I'd also like to take a moment to thank the companies that are helping to make this project possible. Thank you to Rocky Mountain ATV, Rocket Run Suspension, Hermosi Throttles, Power Sports Nation, DRW, Bonehead Performance, and CPI. These are all companies that I trust and most of them I use on a regular basis. Any applicable promo codes and links to their websites will be in the description below. If you're enjoying the video so far and looking for a way to help out, giving the video a thumbs up, leaving a comment below, or subscribing to the channel all help out a ton. Products and tools in the video are listed in the description below, and purchasing from those links does help me out a lot. I get a small kickback from that, and there's no extra cost to you. Basket Case Garage t-shirts with the ASPCA Raptor on the front are now available. The link will be in the description below. Grab your shirt now and let everybody know that you helped save sport quads. And if you're looking to support the channel even further, there is the option to join. All channel members get guaranteed responses to their YouTube comments. All right, guys, I am done talking. Let's get back to the video. I've also been cleaning my bolts. Check this out, man. I have this, I got a brand new tumbler. This thing is freaking huge. Uh, it's the eight, 18 pounder from Harbor Freight. And I just got done pulling my stuff out last night. You can see it, all these bolts were super rusty and stuff. Uh, we had a mix, a mi mix match of bolts, hardware store bolts and stuff on this Banshee. So PSN sent me a couple um, Yamaha bolt bags, which basically when they tear down their machines, they just put all the bolts aside in a plastic bag and you can purchase those bags. So I got, I believe it's a Blaster and a Warrior. They didn't have any Banshee ones in stock. Blaster and Warrior uh, are going to have a lot of the same uh, bolts. So uh, I got two of those that I put in there and the bolts that I took off and uh, all kinds of little stuff like the headlight brackets and all. You can see how clean it makes these. Here's the other box just filled with all bolts. Most of them are OEM Yamaha. We've got our Yamaha OEM studs. And uh, I'd really like to get these zinc coated. Um, I don't know how long that process would take if I were to send it out. Uh, I may experiment a little bit with this, but otherwise I'm just gonna do the coating process like I normally do with these with my bolts. These ones are already done. You can see the way I coat them with paint. These, this actually holds up really well. It's quick, easy, and I can do it right here at the house. Almost forgot to mention the headlight housings. These came out really, really good. I posted a picture on Instagram and uh, people were asking where I found OEM headlight housings. <laughs> so I guess uh, I did a pretty good job mimicking OEM. Those should look really nice. And uh, I don't, I think it's gonna be just like the tank cover. I don't think these are gonna be like, I mean, of course, if it scratches and stuff, the black is gonna show through, but I think that's actually gonna be pretty solid. And then, holy crap, whoa, what is this? Uh, I actually made these nets. I just ordered some one inch cargo netting, uh, basically the same stuff that Nerf bar nets are made out of. And we've got some hot pink Nerf bar nets that's gonna match the color scheme. Dude, check this out. When you put that next to the teal, it looks really cool, man. The pink and teal is a really cool 92 color scheme. It's gonna be crazy. Right now, these are just hot glued together. I noticed by dissecting brand new Nerf bar nets, they, they glue them to hold them in place. And then I've sewn these before with the cargo X pattern. That takes forever, man. I'm gonna send these out to a seamstress right here in town. And I think they'll probably be able to do it fairly cheap just to sew these up. And they'll be like brand new Nerf bar nets, custom color. And now that you guys have seen those headlight housings, the new LEDs did come in. Let's check them out together. I got the box right here. Let's open them up. All right, we've got the chintzy light right here, just ready to crush it by comparison. Already, I can tell by the weight of this box. I'm liking it, man. I'm liking it already. Oh, yeah. Freaking sweet. Oh, dude. Not even a comparison. This is this has literally got to weigh like three or four times as much as this one. You know what? We got to do this. This, this just has to be done, man. The scale of doom is coming out. We got to see what the weight difference is here because weight equals quality. Well... <laughs> If you use that logic, then the Voodoo Banshee, we were just deleting as much quality as we possibly could because that was a weight reduction project. All right, let's put this dinky light on here. This is like the, uh, the Rosie O'Donnell of headlights. I don't think that makes sense, but we'll, we'll just go with it. Jeez, 0.296 pounds. <laughs> Weak. All right, and now the, uh, the new badass with a cast housing headlight. Boom, 0.792, so it's more than double the weight. It just feels better though, man, with the cast housing versus this junky plastic. Junk. The scale of doom, man, it just, it tells no lies. The quality is there. This actually really does feel nice though. Got the waterproof uh, housing here. 
it does like there's no like you just look at this one and it just looks so junky with the sealant in there like all uneven and everything this looks like a really nice professional light dot approved not that that really makes a difference for our off-road stuff but pretty nice looking man and it is it's got the halo on there and then the this is like a wide beam connector much nicer this other one doesn't even have a connector on it well it, it did but it was that cheap plastic one and I think this third wire is for the halo. And then it even comes with a pigtail and a connector for your wire harness. That's, that's pretty nice, man, 35 bucks. Now I did get started making a bracket for these things. I've already laid out a bracket design and what I want it to look like. So uh, let me show you what's going on with that. All right, guys, check it out. So I have this piece of sheet aluminum here. Um, I believe it is a 10th of an inch. So that should be pretty sturdy. And uh, I've gone ahead and I've already marked this stuff up and I wanted this to be something that you know, pretty much anybody can do something re like a really easy conversion and it's kind of getting a little complex, but it's got to be what it's got to be. So uh, maybe what I'll do is end up uh, producing these brackets. I'm going to see how well it turns out though first. So uh, it might be a little bit difficult to understand because we've got all these crisscross lines, uh, but essentially I have a shape there. I don't know if you can see these punch marks, but there's six punch marks. And what I'm going to do is uh, set a little depth gauge on a drill bit and I'm going to drill down into each of these six little areas of cast on the back of this headlight. And then I'll drill holes in this and I'll be able to put those six, put six uh, bolts through and that'll bolt the plate to the back of this. And then I'm gonna bend some tabs down on the side and then I'm gonna put one down on the bottom basically to mimic these tabs on the side and this one down on the bottom. So it will, it'll bolt up to this and it'll, it'll make it so that you could take this with the bracket on it and drop it right in place of an OEM headlight housing and therefore making at least this part of the conversion very easy. All right, now this is gonna be our kind of crude prototype. So I'm gonna use hand tools for this one. Okay, so not bad for hand tools. Probably took me about 20 minutes to make this. If I had a, that water jet man, can you know print these things out in like 10 seconds a piece. But you can see how this lines up. The holes will go like so. And once we drill and tap this headlight, it'll bolt in like that. Then these tabs will bend over both sides. And then this one down here, I'm not sure if I actually have to bend. I may be able to just drill a hole in that. Uh, I didn't drill those holes because I'm not exactly sure where they're going to line up. So I want to make sure that they're right. But you can see that'll make up these tabs here on the side and this little one down here. They'll just be coming in the opposite direction. These will be downwards as the, whereas these are upwards, but it should fit in the OEM location. Now I did want to get this in the vise with the uh, drill press and do these and drill these holes. It would be a lot easier to keep it perfectly straight and uh, keep a perfect depth. Unfortunately, my chuck is a little bit too small. I really want to get this done. So I'm going to do it by hand. I have a really steady hand, so I'm sure that I can do this no problem, but ideally putting it in the chuck would be better. This one, at least we can fit it in the chuck, get this nice and level. And I really have to be careful here because I do not want to damage this light housing or crack the lens. That's pretty snug. Now what I'll do is take a bit and put it to the deepest part that we can go and then mark it with this piece of electrical tape so I don't go too far. And I'll center punch these so the bit doesn't walk. And now I'll just very kindly, kindly and gently drill as straight as I possibly can. Just one down. All right, nothing has broken yet. Now I'm gonna tap these with an M4, put some cutting wax on there, and you know me guys, I live on the edge. I gotta speed tap these. I don't got time for hand tools.
No cracks. I think we're in the green, man. Those all tapped really nice. Got these little stainless steel M4s. They thread in there pretty nicely. Six of those should be really strong. All right, let's see what we got here. Wow, would you look at that, they even line up. So let's throw some screws in here and then we'll see where our tabs fall. Oh man, that looks great. That is nice and solid, even with just four screws in there. I'll put the other ones into later, but for testing purposes, I've just got the four in there. Oh dude, check that out. This is gonna work perfectly. Just bend these tabs over. I can put two bolts in there. And then this one down here is gonna line up with our hole down here. This should be really nice. put these nut certs in instead of doing uh, through bolts because this will make it a lot more convenient to take this on and off and it'll also just be really strong. All right guys check it out I've got it in there I use these low profile bolts these are M8s or M6s rather on the side with the nut certs and I've even got a nut cert down here I've got a little tiny one for that little thin uh, bolt that runs through there and it's really tight Honestly, I don't think it would actually, you really don't need this bottom bolt here, which would be for adjusting. You could just adjust it the way you want and then tighten it down. I, I really don't think that's ever gonna move. And it's just, it's just very, very solid. Now, however, I have discovered an issue as you would with prototypes. And you can see it doesn't wanna close all the way. So if you look in the front, uh, what's happening is these elbows here are bumping into the housing. It's very, very close. If you push, I mean, you, you might actually be able to force it closed. However, I'd rather not do that. So I think what I need to do is bend these so that there's two bends. There'll be a bend here and then a bend here, or, or one here, back here, and then here, just to kind of go match the contour of the back of the light and uh, that housing. So I'm gonna have to pull these apart um, and fix those bends. And the other issue that I had is that with this back spacing on those nut certs, when you put this in place, they hit the light uh, and you can't quite put this in place. There's like a little bit of a gap. I don't know if you guys can see that. So I could shave these down a little bit and make those work. I, I might do that. Or probably the easier way is to take these pinch nuts I can drill out the, um, the rivet nuts and then just put these pinch nuts on. These are a little bit more low profile and these get the job done just as well. However, it's almost 1 a.m. and I'm getting really, really tired. So I think I'm gonna pack it in for the night and continue this tomorrow. All right, guys, it's a fresh day and I did some work on these headlight brackets. I think I got it good, man, check it out. I did a little bit of tweaking of the bracket. You can see these little bends here changed them up, that brought the light forward a little bit, and then I just elongated those holes, and I put those pinch nuts on there, got plenty of clearance now, and uh, got the six bolts in the back, six screws, really nice and tight, nice solid design. Uh, I'll show you, I'll put it in the housing. Now this is the V1, so there's some, some little quirky things that in the V2, I'm sure I'll have those worked out, but this does work. All right, so we're in there, Nice and snug. Uh, I think I'm going to abandon the adjustment thing at the bottom. You could put the screw in there just so that there's not an, uh, the abandoned hole. But I think for, in terms of adjustability, you just loosen these and tilt the light how you like. We'll take our wire and feed it through the back of the housing. And then this just clips into place. We've got our little screw in the bottom. And there we go, man. We're all in place. No rattles, nice and tight. We'll be able to put uh, the factory connector on the back here 
And uh, really the biggest thing is gonna be how well the actual LED performs at nighttime. So this definitely needs a little bit of work. I wanna see if I can make a little bit more of a simple design. I wanna test out the light, make sure that it's, that's even good, because if we have to switch lights, this is all for nothing anyways. And uh, some of you guys are probably yelling at me already because this is the old style, or the new style headlight housing rather. But don't worry, don't worry, I have it right here. This is the original. You can see it's got Yamaha imprinted on there. It's actually, I think it's a bit cooler than, than the new style. But this is what they had in the 1992. I think they discontinued this in 99. And then in 2000, they switched to this design. So I'm going to see if I can uh, fix this up on there so that it is era specific, but you could do this on the newer style Banshees no matter what year. So we're gonna leave this project as in progress. And before I let you go, I've got tons of boxes back here. I think it's about time we open them up. I'm gonna lay the parts out and show you what I got, man, because I got a ton of parts for this thing. And we got a lot of stuff here, a lot of Banshee parts. Well, what are we waiting for, man? Come on over here, let me show you what we got. Man, this is exciting. There are just parts all over the floor. Just give you a quick pan here of all this stuff. And what's crazy is there's still so much more coming. We still got the plastics, we got the suspension coming. Um, we have all the powder coated stuff is on the way. Uh, clutch cover is on the way, lots of good stuff. I mean, there's a ton of stuff here, but we got a ton more coming. But I'll, I'm gonna take you down the line here and just kind of give you guys a quick preview. There's way too much stuff to go over everything. Um, this is stuff from Power Sports Nation. If you guys remember the gears and stuff on the clutch side of the engine were just wasted. So we've got a new inner and outer hub for the clutch basket. We've got a primary drive gear right here, a flywheel, this is all OEM stuff. And we've got a number of gears back here. Got a Wiseco clutch, a billet basket right there. Those are all the internals. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. Got our uh, V-Force reeds and those are genuine. You gotta watch out, man. There's a lot of fakes on the market. I was not really aware, but yeah, there's like identical fakes. They come with a box that looks just like it and everything. Um, adjustable stator plate, got our uh, engine seal kit, seat cover from Moto Seat, uh, brand new OEM stator cover, and these, man, oh yeah. Those are CPI cylinders. Those are 421 made for a 115 long rod. Dude, these things are sweet. CPI is Cast Precision Industries. Uh, honestly, if you guys don't know what CPI is, and uh, you, I'm not saying this to be like funny, like if you tell me you're a Banshee guy and you don't know what CPI is, I'd be legitimately questioning the, uh, the authenticity of what you're saying. <laughs> but seriously, these things are awesome. I'm gonna be doing a cleanup port on these things. Man, look at that. And uh, I'm just super excited to run these. I've run 421s before, but never the CPI version. I've run the Assassin from Driveline but that's gonna be freaking sweet. Then we got our Wiseco pistons here, um, hot rods, crank. It's, a, it's an entire bottom end kit. Uh, we've got uh, another box back there that I wanna open up with you guys. Our clutch lever here. And uh, before you guys go freaking out, I'm gonna be coating this lever to match. Check this out. I've got a brand new OEM lever right here and I've got the uh, master cylinder from a 92. Well, it's actually from a 1990. This is from the OG Banshee. Yeah, man. I had it all coated by uh, Bonehead Performance, and then I put a rebuild kit in there, put a new little sight glass. It looks like brand new. So we've got the new lever there as well. Um, we've got these tusk bars. They're gonna match, kind of look like the OEM ones with the flat black and the crossbar. I'm gonna take the tusk um, cover off because the 92 just had like the foam pad with like two zip ties on it. So we're gonna try to mimic the look there. We've got some OEM parts back here. This is the key holder. Uh, these are OEM grips. We've got a Tusk off-road axle. That's gonna be a plus four. That's gonna kind of go with the whole resto modification thing. Um, this is a new switch. This had really good reviews. And I even noticed the box almost looks like an OEM Yamaha box. Uh, but I did notice it has a really good feel. And it, I mean, it feels like OEM quality. So we'll give that a test. It has like a really nice connector and everything. It's just significantly cheaper than buying an OEM one. We've got a brand new OEM sprocket. We've got a primary drive front sprocket, a aftermarket um, OEM style airbox because there were cracks and stuff in the old one, some bigger boots to fit up bigger carbs, an OEM chain, never had an OEM chain before, like a new one. I think that's so cool to have it right there on the, Yom the Yamaha Genuine Parts and Accessories box. This right here, guys, this is a an OEM toolkit. Going for that OEM look. We've got a Pro, a pro Flow. Uh, intake system that will be going with our, with our airbox. We've got a preview of the graphics kit. 
This is in a stencil for the seat so I can put Yamaha on the back of it. In here is a ton of OEM parts. Just literally like $800 worth. It's crazy how much that, that adds up. Uh, we've got an XFR skid plate. Uh, I know, you know, OEM, you've got that steel skid plate, but I, I think of all the skid plates that I've ever run, uh, this is what I had on the original Banshee. And man, it just, man, I beat the hell out of that thing and I never had any issues in it. And it's kind of a hidden piece. It's under, under the, the bottom of the quad. So I decided that this would kind of be like a part of the, the resto mod thing. I think this is a little bit better than, I mean, the OEM ones are really solid too. They're steel. Uh, but I think that's going to be a nice upgrade. Got some stainless steel tie rods there. That's going to go with our aftermarket A-arms. Uh, they're away at powder coating right now, though. Got a dual piston rear caliper. It's from Zoom Zoom Parts. And dual piston front calipers, too. Banshees typically have the single piston. So we're doubling up the braking power. I did that on the Voodoo Banshee. And, man, it is a nice upgrade. So then uh, you guys have seen the grab bar. We've got a, an older style tail light. This is a new Kickstarter. Uh, it's an aftermarket. But I mean, how can you really go wrong with a Kickstarter? The one that we took off, the splines were totally wasted. So I felt it was a good idea to just completely replace that. We've got wave rotors in the front because they're somewhat hidden. And then in the back, we've got an EBC OEM style. And we've got streamline brake lines. We've got all bearings, tie rod ends. This is all from Rocky Mountain ATV. Uh, Rocky Mountain ATV also hooked up the bottom end kit. They sent a ton of stuff, man. The axle, really thankful uh, for all the sponsors, really. Uh, then we've got a dual petcock. This is a high flow. This is a different style than a pingle. I'm going to try it out because it looks more OEM. But we'll, we'll check that out in another video. Got some Motion Pro cables. And this stuff here is um, the stuff that I got back from Powder Coat so far. There's a ton more over there. I, I can't wait to show you guys. The Powder Coated parts look incredible. So probably in the next video I'll have that stuff here. Uh, but I did get the beadlock rings here. I saw the white wheels already. It's going to look so good with the tires and these black uh, rings. It's just going to look so good. We've got the, the knuckles up there, brake, pedal, rear master cylinder, which I still have to uh, rebuild, some motor mounts. Got brand new seat foam from Moto Seat. Same thing I'm running on the Voodoo Banshee. It's just really nice to update the foam. And then these are the heel guards. These are aftermarket. You see how those fit up. It's a simple piece. Hopefully it's not like... The, uh, the Chinese plastics that we tested, because uh, that was pretty bad. This, is, this sucks, dude. This isn't even close. Oh, Mike, what's in those, those two boxes? You didn't show what's in, it. What's in those boxes. Oh, this is some good stuff right here, man. We've got, one of them is, <laughs> one of them is just uh, something that I consider really special. I have never received a set of brand new cases before. Actually, that's a lie. When I bought the KFX 450R, that came with new cases, but they were already opened and stuff. I've never received a fresh set of Banshee cases. I think this is really cool. I wanted to open it up with you guys. I did open it just to make sure that everything was, like, cool and not messed up when it first came in. But I wanted to show you guys how this comes. And then this box, I mean, this is cool, too, but this is a very, very highly counterfeited part. And I wanted to show you guys how it comes directly from the factory. All right, man, I'm going to do my best to show and fit this in the camera because it's, it's pretty damn big here. But man, first off, it is packed so well. It's double boxed. You know, this is kind of a fragile thing here. Then they've got plenty of packing, got foam, and then you get this really nice heavy duty bag. I'm just gonna pull this bastard out of here. Oh. You can see the box. It's got like a cradle of foam and more paper in the bottom. And then we got the actual cases here. Wow. That is freaking awesome, man. I, I mean, like if you were to show this to somebody who's not into engines or like show it to your girlfriend, she'd be like, what the, f what the f <laughs> why is this exciting it's like a piece of metal but man I, I just think this is so cool all the clean perfectly machined surfaces and everything just i i love it man you get brand new dampers in the front and the back it also comes with the little i forget what these damn things are called are these dampers but <laughs> there you get one on each side that's where they're supposed to be but it does come with them you've got the breather tube on there uh and you get two case bolts bonus it really makes uh 
the $700 for one of these things, easy to stomach because you get those two bolts, you know. I'm gonna pull those off so we can separate these cases. I wanna show you guys why I purchased these for this specific build because, you know, I had talked about repairing the old cases and uh, I, I found some, some more things that kind of made me want to go the new route. So you do not get studs with these, but you do get dowels. And man, oh, I just can't get over, I don't know why. <laughs> I've just got like a thing for fresh, crispy cases. Like, man, look at all where the bearings sit and stuff. It's just, it's gorgeous. So here is the beautiful case that came with our machine and what a comparison that is <laughs> but of course, of course i'm sure this could clean up a little bit better but this is what i really didn't like about these so uh there's a bunch of wear first off it, i don't know what happened here but there's like a trench in embedded in the aluminum and then these are there's a significant lip right here where the crank bearings sit and you can actually see a depression. So I could put, I could strap the cases together and use a bore gauge and see if they'd be in spec. They might still work. I've, you know, you can put some pretty whomped out cases specifically with the Banshee together and it's gonna run, but I just wasn't comfortable and uh, I don't wanna put this thing together and be regretting it or have like some kind of issues with the crank bearing spinning down the road. <laughs> Because of that, I mean, you can see the condition of, oh man, I don't want to get this thing dirty. I gotta be careful. Uh, you can see the condition of where the bearings sit on new cases though. There's no, there's not supposed to be any uh, depression there or anything like that. And I just noticed little, little things all over the cases that kind of just made me feel like these aren't safe to run. All right, now this next box is a little bit more manageable. Sudco. So I'm just gonna tell you what's in here first off. These are the carburetors. So these are genuine 35 millimeter PWKs. Um, I wanted to show this because if you've seen my video where I get the aftermarket, or not aftermarket, the, uh, the knockoff ones, they come in boxes that literally looks like they came right from Sudco. I mean, it's crazy. So this is something that I didn't see on the Chinese one though, is that the Sudco tape. So this is directly from Sudco. This is, this is how they should come if you order them from the factory. Packed with newspaper. I don't know if they always do that, but I actually have not dug into this. So this is, we're opening this together. And then we've got the actual carburetors. <clears throat> Nothing else in there. And here is the box. The boxes look identical to the knockoffs. That's the scary thing. Although this was all blank on the genuine. Somebody actually wrote in on there. I mean, that's something I'm sure knockoff company could easily do that. Here is the back. This sometimes does look different. I've gotten genuine carbs that um, it's a little bit different back here. Pop this open. And there is our carb. Wow. This is another one of those just like cool items if you're into it. So there's our carb. Now this is, uh, if. I wish I had a knockoff here, but knockoffs, they mimic these so good that it's actually scary. Uh, there's a couple things I can point out, but a lot of this stuff, I mean, they're just constantly making them better and better than knockoffs. But uh, you wanna make sure key in is on here. That's one of those things though, a lot of knockoffs have it. And there's a little serial number down here, or part number, the PWK imprint. Sometimes there's a sticker that says Sudco. But again, the, the knockoffs have that too. The green uh, line, motorcycle race use only, the little key and logo right there. This is the one thing though, and I almost hate saying this because I, I know the, the Chinese factory guys, some of them, they, they watch my videos. So I hate giving away these secrets, but you know, they've got their informants, man. If, if they're watching, hi. Uh, what I noticed that kind of tips off, at least for me, a knockoff, is that the machining on the inside of the carburetor is shinier. There's kind of like a roughness to the OEM ones. I'll put a little video up here that shows the uh, at the knockoff one. That's the only giveaway that really I notice. 
Now, because there's so many knockoffs of these PWK carburetors, I was actually nervous to order these because they're super expensive. The MSRP on these things are $370 a pop. That's if you're paying full MSRP. That's no joke, man. You're, especially on a Banshee, you gotta order two of them. You're talking like $750. And what's scary is you can get knockoffs that look just like this for 30 bucks. There's also guys reselling knockoffs, claiming that they're genuine, and they want like four or $500 for a pair. So you look at the price and it's like, oh man, it's $500, that's gotta be genuine. But they might not be. So it's kind of scary. And uh, when I ordered these, I called up my buddy Dave Moore. Dave Moore, if you guys follow the channel, he's a good buddy of mine. He's been uh, in the racing game for, geez, 30 plus years. And he's probably one of the most trusted guys that I know. I called him up and I was like, man, where do you order carburetors from? And he told me DTR Racing in Salem, Oregon. So I called up Matt. He's the owner of DTR. And uh, he hooked me up with these carburetors. If you guys are in the area of uh, Salem, Oregon, and you're looking to get work done on your Banshee or whatever bike you have, Matt's an extremely well-known builder. He was recommended to me by Dave. Anybody that Dave trusts, I trust as well. So if you're looking to get any kind of engine work done and you're local to that area, I would definitely hit up DTR Racing. They do not have a website, but you can find them on Facebook at DTR Racing. So as usual, man, we've got our work cut out for us. We've got some awesome parts here, but I've got to get to working on the V2 of our LED headlights. Our powder coated parts are about to come in. Uh, Rocket Ron just got back to me. The suspension is done. Dude, it looks awesome. I, I can't wait to show you guys. It looks so good. If you follow me on Instagram, you might've seen the pictures. I can't wait to actually see them in person, man. It this is just gonna be, I didn't think I'd be this excited for this build, but seeing the colors and stuff come together, man, I'm just really, really getting excited. So I appreciate everybody watching the video. I appreciate you guys doing this with me. If I was doing it by myself, it'd be super boring, man, because when you do stuff and you, if you don't have anyone to share it with, it's just, what's the point? So I appreciate all you guys hanging out with me and uh, helping me out with this stuff. And if you're looking to support the channel, uh, please give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Also consider subscribing if you wanna see more videos like this. And if you're looking to support the channel even further, there is the option to join. All channel members get guaranteed responses to the YouTube comments. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great weekend. Peace out.